Well, good morning, Mosaic, and welcome back. If this is your first time joining us, welcome to Online Worship with Mosaic Church. I'm your host, DJ, and I'm the Online Worship Director. Do you guys see this behind me? Do you see that? Okay, so I was sitting in my kitchen minding my own business when I heard a cracking noise and I look up from the dishes in the sink and all of a sudden my blinds came crashing down. And after the shock of it all and, and of course calling maintenance, I realized that I'd never seen the full view outside these huge windows. It was always partially obstructed by the blinds and for 10 years, I had been unable to see the bigger picture. And God spoke to me in that moment and reminded me that although we've had a pretty tough week and it's been exhausting, no matter where you stand, something may have been blocking you from seeing the bigger picture. That no matter what happens, God is still good and Jesus is Lord. He is our maintenance man. He is our leader. He's our protector and he is our guide. What in your life has been obstructing your view? What veil needs to be torn down? What blinds need to fall? Pastor Roz has an incredible message for us, and today we are declaring that Jesus is Lord. Let's pray and worship together. Good morning, Mosaic family. My name is Paola, and I'm here with you to pray. I'm going to start to pray in Portuguese and then in English. Senhor Deus Todo-Poderoso, nos colocamos diante de Ti nesta manhã, oh Deus, para glorificar o Teu nome e Te adorar. Senhor, obrigado, oh Pai, por tudo que tem feito por nós, Senhor, porque o Senhor não nos abandona. Senhor Deus, coloque teus anjos, Senhor, tomando conta, oh Pai, nos fortaleça, Deus. Perdoa, Senhor, os nossos pecados, ó oh Deus, e esteja conosco, oh Pai. Senhor Deus, obrigado, oh Pai, por nos mostrar que por, nós podemos fazer planos, Senhor, mas é o Senhor é quem dá o passo, Senhor, é o Senhor é quem faz. E nada acontece sem que o Senhor queira, ó oh Deus. Obrigado, oh Pai, porque o Senhor cuida de nós e porque o Senhor tem controle de todas as coisas, ó oh Deus. Senhor, coloque o Teu Espírito Santo, oh Pai, nos guiando, Senhor, a cada caminho, oh Pai, que a gente possa crescer na Tua Palavra, Deus. Abençoe, Senhor, os pastores, abençoe as famílias, ó oh Deus. Venha curar, Senhor, todos que estão enfermos e precisam de Ti, ó oh Deus. Somos agradecidos por Sua misericórdia, Senhor, e graça, em nome de Jesus. Almighty God, we are here on this morning to glorify your name and worship you and confirm that you are our only God and we need you. Lord, forgive our sins and help us to grow with you. Dear God, you created everything and you know everything. So in those difficult weeks, you made us see that whatever happens, you are God. Even if it's good or bad days, you are God. You have the control of everything and we just need to have faith and trust on you. So bless, Lord, the families, bless the pastors. Stay with uh, every people who is sick in this moment. So you're always, always thankful for your mercy and love. So we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
1997, a movie swept the world. It was the first movie to reach the billion dollar mark in worldwide gross ticket sales. Teenage girls in particular went time after time to the theater just to see this blockbuster again. And I have to admit, I may have gone to see it, but only because all the cute girls were going. This movie that won 11 Oscars was none other than Titanic. Many of us feel like we are on a Titanic right now. With all the fighting in our increasingly polarized society, and yes, even the church, it feels like we are all losing. The more we focus on being right than living right, the more we feel like the entire boat is sinking. The interesting thing about the Titanic sinking is that everyone was in the same predicament, no matter their status, skin color, or economics. And as the Titanic was sinking, a band started playing music. And the story of the musicians playing on while the ship sank is one that has lived on from that tragic day. And now one of the most important pieces of Titanic memorabilia in existence is being made available to fans for the first time. It is the violin that was actually played. Sadly, the violin player Hartley didn't survive and was found two weeks after the sinking with music case strapped to his body. Incredibly, it was this case that allowed his violin to endure such cold, wet conditions and remain intact. After it was salvaged, Hartley's fiance gifted the violin to a music teacher at the Salvation Army. And before it was sold at an auction, it went for $1.7 million. Legend has it that the band played Near My God to Thee just moments before the Titanic sank. Some of the chorus says, 
near my God to thee, near to thee, e'en though it be a cross that raiseth me. So as the 1,500 people who were dying and the 705 individuals who survived were on the Titanic, as it was going down, they sang a hymn of praise to God that was essentially a prayer. You might wonder, how can you sing at a time like this? That's a great question. When the world is falling apart, people are looking at Jesus' followers wondering, how can you keep your faith? What gives you so much joy and what keeps you going? Early Christians were asked these types of questions, especially as they were going through persecution, martyrdom, and attacks. And yet they did not give up their faith. They didn't turn on each other. They were united and they kept singing in one voice. And one of the earliest declarations of the Christian faith that was sang and proclaimed was written in a Roman prison by the Apostle Paul. It's known as the Christ hymn, and it's found in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. We look at it in its entirety, but we're going to be focusing in especially on verses 9 through 11. Verse 5 says this, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in an appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. These verses of Scripture not only share about the character of Christ and his lordship, but serve the early church as a hymn or a sort of creed. It was something they went to time and time again. Now, it's debatable whether Paul actually wrote this or quoted it, but nonetheless, it was introduced in a divided time and period when Christianity was under attack. The first few verses talk about Jesus' humanity, or in the Greek, a word that captures this is kenosis. It means to empty oneself. The second half of the hymn shares what happened once Christ emptied himself. God the Father exalted him and gives us a future promise of the age to come, that every tongue will confess Jesus Christ is Lord. What does Lord mean? The use of this title is a bit ambiguous. This is because Lord can have at least three different meanings in the original Greek. Sometimes it can mean simply sir as a polite and slightly exalted way of referring to another human being. Sometimes it can refer to the master of slaves or to one who has many servants. While some of the people mentioned in the New Testament may have had these meanings in mind when they spoke to Jesus, it is the third meaning that the title Lord can have, which we are most concerned about today. This is what Paul and those who referred to Jesus in the early church used. When kurios is used in this sense, it conveys the idea of the one who is absolutely sovereign. It's a majestic title conveying God's sovereignty and divine power. And divine power. Early Christ followers did not use this title lightly, and neither should you and I. Because Jesus is Lord, it means cost. It's going to cost us something. There's a difference between viewing Jesus as Savior and Lord. Looking at Jesus as Savior only is the idea that we follow Jesus to save us from our sins. We all need Jesus as Savior. However, we forget that Jesus wants to be the Lord of our lives. It's not just the spiritual side, but it's all the parts of our lives. It means living counterculturally to the world that is worn against itself. It means making decisions that others may not agree with and going against the status quo. It could mean rejection from others. It means maybe in some parts of the world, death. In the early church, it meant losing everything. One story that stands from church history is about a man named Polycarp. 
Now, Polycarp was 86 years old, and he was a victim of the brutal persecution of the church by the Roman Empire, which afflicted the faithful for the first few centuries of the church's life. Polycarp was an elderly man when he died, so old, in fact, that he personally known the Apostle John, probably the last surviving person who actually knew him. Leading up to his death, a Roman official gave Polycarp the chance to recant. The Roman official said to Polycarp, Deny Christ and I will set you free. To which Polycarp declared, Eighty-six years have I served him and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king and my savior? The reason for Rome's persecution of the church was that Christians proclaimed that Christ was an authority that was higher than that of Rome and its emperor. We call Christ Lord and Savior and do not realize these terms are not just honorary titles or theological abstractions. See, Caesar held the title Lord and Savior and would tolerate no rivals to this claim. That Christians would call Christ who had died at the hands of the Roman power, their Lord and Savior, was an affront to Caesar's status and authority. When was the last time declaring Jesus as Lord and Savior cost you something? When was the last time you lived so radical for your faith that it might have made others around you a bit uncomfortable, or maybe yourself a bit uncomfortable? Brothers and sisters, it is, it is time to count the cost. As Jesus said, to pick up your cross and follow him daily. Again, not a popular message. However, for the church to truly be a witness in the world, it must look different than the world. Not condemn the world through their words, but love the world through their actions. Where others start to say there is something different about that person or about you. Look at all they have gone through. Look at, and yet, the way they treat one another is through love. So following Jesus as Lord means it's going to cost you. It also means allegiance. Not a term we often use anymore in society. Maybe we pledge allegiance to the flag or to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Now I should warn you, I purposely prayed and wrote this sermon a month ago. And I didn't want to be swayed by anyone's reaction to the election. I wanted to hear from the Lord. And I believe American Christians have created idolatry out of political parties where our allegiance to the donkey or the elephant has become more important than the Lamb of God and the Lion of Judah. It is not political party first or even country first. It must be God first. Our allegiance to Jesus as Lord is recognizing that our existence in our setting right now is only temporary. As Paul says, we are strangers in the world. We have dual citizenship, but our permanent residence is within the kingdom of God. So does your allegiance to a set of beliefs, rules, and ideology make you put down someone else's views? Allegiance essentially means loyalty. If we look at our schedules, checkbooks, and frankly, even our social media accounts, can others tell where our allegiance is? Jesus is Lord also means submission. The Christ hymn in Philippians 2 is all about a God-man who submitted himself to God the Father. It is the emptying process we talked about. Submission means formation. If we allow God to do it, God will form our wants, desires, prayers, and wills. We learn this even in Jesus' weakest point as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but your will be done. Jesus was not jumping up and down with excitement to die on the cross at the very moment as he was going through betrayal, hurt, and torment. Remember, he was 100% God and 100% human. A battle between the flesh and the spirit ensued. We have that same battle. This is exactly why God calls us to submit to him. This reminds me of the first three steps of AA's 12 step, which by the way are founded on scripture. One is we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives have become unmanageable. Second, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. And third, make a, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God 
as we understand him. Submission perhaps is a sign of weakness in the world's eye, but in the kingdom of God, submission is strength. The biblical meaning of submission means to willingly and honorably place another's needs before our own. In Ephesians 5.20, we read that as followers of Jesus, we are to submit to one another out of reverence or allegiance to Christ. That means I place your needs above my own and you do the same. We try outdo one another in submission. So what areas of your life do you need to submit to Jesus? When we practice submission, then comes the best part. Jesus is Lord. It means joy. There is joy in submission to God. There is joy in following God's will for our lives. In the Christ hymn of Philippians 2, after Jesus emptied himself, there is something that happens in the latter verses. Jesus is glorified and he's elevated. As it says in James chapter 4, verse 10, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. There is a joy in following Jesus. In fact, at least three times in John's gospel, Jesus talks about joy. John 15, 11, it says this, These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. John 17, 13, Jesus says this, But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. In John 16, 22, Therefore you too have grief now, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. So how can you sing at a time like this? Because joy will not be perfect in this life. We will always strain and struggle. We will have our angst and our anxieties, but we will have peace from serving our Lord. I want to close our time today with the words written by English hymn writer E.H. Swinstead. Lord of every thought and action, Lord to send and Lord to stay, Lord in speaking, writing, giving, Lord in all things to obey, now and evermore to be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and God's people said, Amen.
Is Jesus still Lord? 100% yes. Are they coming to install new lines later next week? 100% yes. Amen. No matter what, like I said, God is still good and Jesus is still Lord. I encourage you to share today's online worship with your friends. Let's go ahead and spread this message across the world. While you're sharing, go ahead and invite your friends to party with us on November 22nd. We'll be giving thanks and celebrating all that God has done for the Mosaic family. Join us inside the old Elder Beerman at 10 a.m. for family style worship. We've got something for everyone of every age. Our new children's ministry spaces, Mosaic Kid Zone, will be open on December 6th. There's still time to sign up to help make our new space a home. You can visit our new serve page on our app or website, www.wearemosaic.org to serve, to sign up for Mosaic Makeovers or Sunday Helpers. And while you're on our website, go ahead and check out our newest discipleship classes under the Connect tab. You can sign up for our new membership class, Mosaic 101, Advent Study, Because of Bethlehem, and many more. And since you're already on our app or website to sign up for classes or to serve, go ahead and click the Give button to submit your tithes and offerings. You can also mail a check to 70 Birch Alley, Suite 240, Beaver Creek, Ohio. And I want you to join us back here next week for Youth Worship Takeover. Youth Worship is one of my absolute favorites, and the team has been working with some incredible young folks to make this the best one yet. So whether you're worshiping with us in person inside the Fairfield Commons Mall or worshiping with us online, you are sure to be blessed. Grant, O oh Lord, that what has been said with our lips, we may believe in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, we may practice in our lives. Amen. And see you guys next week.